Hey guys, uh, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make your own Darth Revan mask. It's going to be a two-part tutorial. Uh, the first part is just going to be focusing on modeling and painting it, and the second part is going to be uh, adding the Mod Podge uh, finish and uh, adding all the extra stuff to it. So the reason why I wanted to make uh, my own Darth Revan mask is because I was always fascinated by the character Darth Revan from uh, Knights of the Old Republic. And I went online and I couldn't find any tutorials on how to make your own mask. I saw some pictures. Uh, some people made their own masks and they looked very cool, but there were no instructions on how to make your own. So I thought I would give it a shot myself and make this tutorial for you guys to show what I did to make my mask. And uh, maybe in the future you'll be using my tutorial to make your own. So. What I started off with was I set up myself in a little area to work with. I got a plastic wrap um, you can get from your kitchen or wherever you keep it. Uh, just add a couple of sheets onto the table or surface that you're going to be working with. Make sure you have lots of room to work with because uh, the clay stuff can get messy. And you want to be putting your dirty tools somewhere on the plastic and not on the table because then that would leave some marks and you will not be happy with about that. And neither will anyone else who owns that table. So the, the clay material that I use is um, DOS's Air Hardening Modeling Clay. You can use, uh, you can purchase this at Joanne Fabrics or a supply store. Um, it air hardens, so it'll dry once exposed to um, the air. And once you're done with it, you'll definitely want to keep this in a Ziploc bag uh, to keep that from happening. Uh, you can paint it with uh, any kind of color that you want. That's a really cool thing about the clay, but um, it doesn't matter what color you start off with. Um, the color that uh, the clay that I got was basically like a, a brownish red color, but it doesn't really matter. It was just what I had at hand. So when you have your plastic, um, you'll also need a knife to make the grooves along uh, the mask. Uh, you'll need a toothpick to get into the fine areas to scrape off excess clay and uh, glue where you don't want it. And uh, gloves would be a really nice thing to have because when you're working with a mask, when you're working with clay, um, it tends to add a lot of color that you wouldn't really want to stick onto you. So uh, just some vinyl gloves, a like cheap plastic thin layer uh, gloves can be fine. And you can get those at maybe, I don't know, Home Depot or Joanne Fabrics or any other kind of supply store. So how I started off the mask was I had two main pieces. Um, the top part for the forehead, which was basically shaped into a semicircle, and the bottom part for the nose and mouth, which is basically like a long triangle pointing downwards. Um, the, the, uh, the layer of the clay, it was basically about half an inch thick, uh, slightly less than that. Uh, you don't want it to be too thick because you'll, you'll want to use as much as you can. Um, and you don't want it to be too thin because you don't want it to break when you're molding it. And that would be really bad if it did. Uh, in order to give it that shape to uh, fit around your head, uh, I used a kitchen bowl, uh, something that was oval shaped, something that was very similar to the size of my head. Uh, you can look yourself for anything that you might have in your house, uh, whether it would be like a bowl or um, a balloon. Uh, I don't know how good a balloon would be because the mask is quite heavy and it would have to lay on it for some time. So a bowl would be much better uh, if you can find something, uh, particularly oval shaped and uh, better yet yeah, something can uh, fit about around your head. Uh, so once you have that, uh, you'll take your two pieces, uh, the top part uh, with a semicircle and the triangle, and uh, you want to get that eye visor, you want to get that little eye slot for uh, Darth Revan's mask. And you want to leave that space open, but you want to connect the sides. So you'll push those sides together and uh, just make a, you know, just, just have those two parts joined together. Uh, it will be a little bit thin when you press it, so make sure that you have some extra clay with you um, to uh, patch up those areas and any soft spots so that that won't happen. And once you do that, uh, when you have your uh, the clay mask, the basically like the starting points, uh, what you have, and um, you have all that on your bowl, then it's time to start shaping your mask into the shape that you want it to be. Now, in order to get that rectangular slot in the middle going all the way from the nose to the mouth, um, you can add extra layers of clay on the front, or you can move 
the clays on the, the clay on the sides like with your fingers um, and just slowly uh, smoothing it out shaping it towards the center uh, just pushing it uh, towards the face giving it that nice curved look um, on the sides and then giving it that rectangular look on the front uh, the top part for the forehead has that little strip uh, what I did was I took another piece of clay um, and I made like a, a nice long uh, strip of it basically uh, a, like a little rod and then I pushed it around uh, to give it or so it could cover the entire area and then um, shaped it into a rectangle and uh, I made sure that the eye slot uh, in between those two parts it would always stay the same size all the way around uh, you can just use your knife to go back and forth onto those two sides inside make sure that um, it's not closing in on, closing in on itself and uh, just be careful for where the, the eyes, um, the end points for the eye slot, uh, where your two main pieces connected. Uh, there might be a little gap in there, so make sure that you fill that in with clay. Um, and make sure you press down on it. It's, uh, I prefer using a toothpick to make sure that uh, that clay gets in there, because it is a, a small area. Uh, depending on how big you want your eye, uh, your, um, eye slot to be, um, I would still use a toothpick in general. So once you have that down, uh, you'll be putting on, uh, you'll be making the grooves for your face. Um, this mask does take a lot of time to make, so uh, you'll need to have a lot of patience. Shaping it, first of all, will probably be the hardest part because when you shape it, once it dries, there's no going back. So make sure that when you're shaping it, you're pleased uh, with what you have and... Um, when you're ready to continue on, when there's no more changes that you can make, then you can move on. Uh, so the grooves will come after you're finished with the uh, shaping of the mask. And once you're done with that, uh, when you when you have when you see what you like, you know when you like what you see, uh, it'll start off with the grooves. Uh, you'll be going to your reference picture, uh, assuming that you're using one, and just being careful and going over all the parts where. Uh, you see the grooves. Uh, I used the kitchen knife to cut out the slots and you don't want to cut them too deep because then you'll be cutting um, it through the clay and when it dries your mask is going to be breaking in two and you do not want that. Uh, but you also want to make sure that it doesn't look like it was a bump or basically just, like just a little dent in the mask. Uh, so you want to cut it um, but you want to make sure that it doesn't really go in too deep, um, just enough so that you can see the uh, sort of like the engravement lines all around the mask, and uh, it is it still keeps itself together. Uh, you'll be able to strengthen all those grooves out when you put the um, layer of glue on it, so that it'll be closing in on itself a little bit uh, tighter. Uh, it'll look a lot cooler when it's finished, and it keeps it uh, keeps itself together a lot easier. Uh, so when you're doing the grooves, uh, make sure that you um, keep the shape of the mask, uh, especially the rectangular part and um, the curves. Uh, make sure that the top slot for the, the forehead piece, when you put that strip on, um, it's supposed to look like a, a, another piece that's sticking out. So you can add, a, you can make a, a groove uh, right on top of the slot uh, where it connects with the forehead. And you can just uh, use a toothpick to um, finish it up and make it look nice and neat and rectangular and flat. Um, keep checking on your eye slot to make sure that it's not closing in on itself because the clay, um, as it dries, um, as it's moving around, um, it will start to get smaller and smaller. Make sure that you keep opening it up to the size that you want it to be. So once you have the uh, grooves done in your mask, uh, you'll have... Uh, the two little uh, dots on the bottom. I took a toothpick and made the circles um, with a toothpick as well. It did take a while because um, I had to be very careful and I had to get that shape and that look to it. Um, and the whole the grooving top the grooving process probably did take an hour. Um, it could have taken longer depending on how detailed uh, you want your mask to be, um, but uh, it turned out pretty well for myself. So you can do it uh, as much as you feel like you need to and uh, 
whenever you'll be pleased with what you have, uh, then you can just let it dry overnight uh, so that you can use it for painting. Now, well, uh, it does take a while to dry because it's an air hardening clay and you want to get all that water to evaporate from it. Uh, so I, I would probably wait through the night and then the next day um, it, should be, it should be dry enough to handle. It should be preferably easy to take it off of the bowl. Uh, you still want to be careful when you're doing it uh, because you don't want to break anything and the clay is still fragile, especially at the weakest parts um, where the eye slots are. Because uh, there's a very there's like a very little bit of clay there, and uh, you just want to be very careful with it. So in order to strengthen it, uh, in the inside you will immediately notice all the cracks that you have in your mask uh, from putting the clay on. What you want to do is you want to take um, some glue, like say Elmer's glue or an adhesive. You probably get that from your hobby shop uh, or Joanne Fabrics, and uh, you want to go over all the cracks. Make sure that the glue fills in. Um, Anywhere that you see the cracks, anywhere that you see the holes, you want to make sure that you fill up that you fill those up, uh, because you don't want your mask um, to be having any uh, fracture points, any weak spots that uh, could cause it to crack um, at a moment's notice. Uh, you also want to go over the uh, edges of the mask with glue to make sure that it's a lot smoother on the outside and it would it would be easier to handle. Uh, the visor, the eye slot, you also want to put glue over that to make it smoother, uh, especially to see through. Uh, and just make sure, once again, that you have all the cracks taken care of and your glue is drying within, um, I would say, a few hours. Uh, it does take a while for glue to dry. Uh, some, some, some glues, it doesn't take that long at all. But on clay, for some reason, there's a lot of uh, moisture. <clears throat> that is uh, involved with it and it seems like glue takes a while to draw uh, to yeah to dry on clay because it's uh for one thing it's cold uh because of the water and it's trying to just evaporate so depending on how long your glue takes i would just leave it alone uh you can check on it periodically to see if the glue is dried up if you can touch it and it doesn't get on your skin and Depending on how long that takes, um, you'll just you can just wait a while, um, just let it sit there. Um, if you have a fan to help it blow, to keep the air coming in and drying it off, uh, that would help a lot because uh, that will speed up the process to let it dry up. So when you're done with the glue and the cracks uh, on the uh, inside of the mask, um, it would be a good idea just to make sure that you don't have anything else that's like left over or any other parts that are sticky or if you have like too much glue um, on the insides or maybe like some bumps that would just be irritating your face whatever is sticky or wet you just want to take care of that and maybe like rub it uh, somewhere else on the clay where there isn't enough glue or there's no glue at all because if there's more glue in one spot then it will take a while for it to dry and if you don't need it there you can move it to uh, another area. You, you do want to get most of the mask, um, but mainly the cracks. That's what you want to worry about because that's where the fracture points are and those will increase the chances of your mask breaking. So I'm going to stop the tutorial here and um, stay tuned for part two. Uh, part two we're going to be looking at putting the coating of Mod Podge on the mask, uh, giving it that nice um, color and um, we'll be painting it for well, with the colors that we want too. So um, take care and stay tuned for part two.